Right, chaps, boys and girls, about time we made a video, isn't it? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Alright, I'll talk like me again. Time to make some more videos regarding the switch mode power supply that I'm making. You might remember in the previous video, success! And pretty much very little has changed. Anyway, today what I'm going to do is see if I can get increased voltage. I might actually build another one of these circuits and then rip a transformer out of another power supply and uh, parallel it all up and stuff. But um, firstly, what I want to do is I want to have a look at the waveforms on the MOSFET gates. Excuse the state of the scope right now. But anyway, I've got the rectified mains 0 volts connected to the scope's ground. We've got the scope's inputs connected to the gate of the low side MOSFET. There is absolutely no way I'm going to test the high side MOSFET. And for a load, I've got this fan which came out of a power Mac, I think. Anyway, we'll turn this, I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to plug it in and... I don't really think this speaker should be on there, that's gonna... Even though it does have a shield on there, but that might not be a very good idea. Let me just move the line down, because we're gonna measure DC. So our zero volts is right there. Now if I could just get to the plug, so I can plug this in, and hopefully without pulling everything out... One of my fellow YouTubes suggested I should test for ringing. Well, uh, I don't see much of a sign of ringing. There might be a little bit of a nip there, but that's just... Of course, the scope is showing up very, very faintly on the camera, but that's, uh, that's just something this camera seems to have against my scope. I don't really know why. But you might be able to hear that the fan is going and spinning merrily away. So I really don't think we have any kind of a problem with ringing there. So now what we want to do is test the output waveform from the transformer. So let's go do that right now. Okay, I've now got the output of this transformer connected up to the scope. The center tab on the transformer, which is right here, is connected to the scope's ground. And of course I've just got one of the outputs connected up to the scope's input. So we can have a good look at the waveform that comes off that transformer. Right, you can see the scope there. I'm just going to turn the lights out so the camera can actually see the scope screen. Like I said before, the, the screen on the scope is not faint by any stretch of the imagination, but it just looks all washed out and barely legible on the camera. Unless I have the lights turned down really low, and even then it doesn't look all that good. So, this is the waveform from the out of the transformer. It's a little bit too high for the scope. Let's just uh, zoom out a little bit on that waveform. Look, I don't think we have a problem there. It looks very nice and square. Well, one thing I do want to try, see, is if putting an optocoupler across the capacitor there is going to have... See if I can use that to temporarily shut the chip down. Thing is, I don't know if it will shut the chip down until the next time it's powered up, or if it will just temporarily shut it down, so that's what I want to try and see. It might do something completely, absolutely crazy that I didn't expect, so, uh... Let's see what happens. All right, we're going to see now exactly what's going to happen if I short out this little orange capacitor. You might have been thinking I was pointing to this electrolytic, but I wasn't. I was pointing to this little ceramic capacitor. Maybe if I move the camera in close, you can see. There we go. So like I said, I've just tapped on this little optocoupler right here. And these wires go to the LED inside the optocoupler. And the other side of the optocoupler will short out this capacitor, hopefully, when the power is applied. Thing is, I don't even know. 
I just bumped the camera then. I don't even know if the circuit is even going to work with this little thing in the circuit. So uh, I'll just plug this in and see what happens. Okay, well, the waveform is there. Um, I've also got the scope on so I can monitor the waveform. Seems to be a little bit jittery though. Anyway, I'm going to plug in the optocoupler now and see if it shuts the chip down. Right, it does absolutely nothing. So I'll check that I haven't got this plugged in the wrong way round or something stupid like that. I have turned the opto isolator the right way round this time because instead of having the transistor connected across this capacitor, we had the LED connected across the capacitor, so no wonder it wasn't working. Thing is, there is no notch at the top of this chip to tell you which way around it is. So there's absolutely no way whatsoever you can tell which way around you've got it got. Also, just to make sure, this is a fresh optocoupler, just in case I blew the old one, although I don't think I would have, but can never be too careful. Now let's see if this thing even starts up. So I'm going to plug it in. We're going to take a look on the scope. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, we're getting the same result that we did before. Now those of you wondering why the spike light bulb briefly comes on when I plug it in, that's just a safety measure. So in case the circuit starts suddenly drawing excess current, that light bulb will come on and most of the current will go through that and hopefully save the circuit. Anyway, we're going to connect up the optocoupler to this little 9 volt battery, or battery as we say here, and let's see what happens. Okay, yep, yeah, chip shuts down. And the light bulb has suddenly come on full bright. When I released the optocoupler, the light bulb, this light bulb, that is, was shining. I don't think that's such a good idea after all. So I'll just check that nothing got hot. It's stone cold. That's cold. That's warm, but uh, that's to be expected. Okay, well, uh... Let's just see if it still works. No, there is definitely a problem here, and now you can see why that light bulb was such a good idea. Okay, I think it's about time for a little damage report. Okay, so we have two MOSFETs here, both of which have gone completely shorted. I tested those with the meter, and both of those are complete dead short. Also, I haven't, I don't know whether this chip is still right, but I'm not going to be using that one again, just to be safe. And luckily, I have ordered extras of these, so I can rebuild the circuit, and everything will be alright again. Okay, well, I've replaced the chip, both the MOSFETs, which I'm not going to touch because one of them is going to have thousands of, well, maybe not thousands of volts, but it would be pretty nasty if I touched it. Anyway, I'm trying out the transformer from the other power supply, the other ATX power supply, using a much bigger rectifier, which you can barely see in there, but trust me, it's there, using an inductor on both the positive and the negative, and I've even replaced the meter. And as you can see, everything is working absolutely perfectly. So let's just see what voltage we got here. I'll try and do this without shorting anything out. And we have, that's a little bit lower than what the other transformer gave us. This has only given us about 11.3 volts, but I can take care of that. Oh, one thing I am curious about, though, is the frequency of this thing. Alright, so I've now got the meter connected between the center tap 
and one of the outputs on the transformer. So we'll give this a little test and see what frequency this is actually running at. Okay, well that is much higher than what I expected it to be. We have almost 48.5 kilohertz, almost 48.5. So there you go. Anyway, this video is getting a little bit long already, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop now, and I'm going to do the rest of the power supply in the next video in this series about, um, and about this. Anyway, for those of you wondering about the vacuum tube tester coil project, well, I haven't really made much progress with that. It's still about the same. Thing is, having to juggle two electronics projects, doing both of those at the same time, and working on my cartoons. You know, that's why I don't get videos out as often as I would like to. But anyway, that's about it for this video. So anyway, in the next video, I'll see about adding a second part to this power supply. Things are looking good so far. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.